Welcome back to Shop Life. In this video, I'm going to show you how to reinforce your subframe using the reinforcement plate method. So the main reason you're going to be doing this is to prevent your subframe floor from cracking. It usually cracks at the mounting points, mainly because of all the stress that it experiences while you're driving. This is more common on the early model E46s, but it does not mean that your E46 might not experience it. So the, one, the car that I'm working on today is an E46 M3. The M3s are more common in experiencing these failures as opposed to non-M's, but it happens to all the E46s. So no matter what year you have, even if it's a convertible, if it's a coupe, you might end up experiencing the failure of the suffering mounting points eventually. So let's go ahead and get started. So the tools that you're going to need, you're going to need a grinder or some type of, or some type of sandpaper or wire brush to remove all the paint and undercoating from the subframe mounting points. You're also going to need an applicator gun with epoxy that we're going to be using to attach the plates to the subframe mounting floor. The epoxy I'm using is 3M08115. The main reason you're going to need an applicator gun is because it is a dual cartridge, so make sure you get the applicator gun with whatever epoxy you're using. You're also going to need a mixing nozzle, which will mix both parts of the epoxy as it comes out. You're going to need some kind of heating source to heat up the epoxy, especially if it's cold wherever you're doing it, you're going to need to heat up the metal as well. And of course you're going to need the plates. So these plates I got from Turner Motorsports. Uh, they have a whole kit for the whole suffering reinforcement. There are other manufacturers that sell these reinforcement plates, or you can make them on your own, measuring all the dimensions and just making on your own. Many reason I like to buy them pre-cut is because they are they're already bended, they fit perfectly, and they are tried and tested. So like you saw, I'm going to be using epoxy. You can also weld the plates in, but you have to make sure that whoever is welding, they are very, very good at welding. Because if they don't weld it properly, you're going to end up making your suffering mounting points weaker, and you also don't have a full contact patch as the epoxy provides. The epoxy will coat that whole surface where the plate is going, and it will make sure that no moisture is going to get into that surface, so you don't have to worry about anything rusting. If you are going to be welding, make sure you, once you take off all of the undercoating and stuff, you do use some kind of weld through primer before you weld. So like I said, I prefer the epoxy method. You can go ahead and also go a step further with the reinforcement by doing the BMW structural foam method, which I will be making a separate video on. So stay tuned for that as well. In order to do this reinforcement, you obviously have to take off your full rear end, including the whole subframe and everything. I have a video on this, which I will link down below. The video is shot on a sedan, E46, but it is very, the process is similar for M3s, non-Ms, coupes, convertibles, sedans, everything it is all the same. So just go ahead and watch that video. Go ahead and remove your subframe. This would also be a good time to change all of your bushings out, your differential, subframe, rear trailing arm bushings, everything all at once. So if you're gonna be doing this, just make sure you plan ahead. That way you can have your car down for a certain period of time and you make sure you buy all of the bushings and tools you will need for that. I'll also be making a separate video on how to change the bushings, but that will be going up later on in this, in this channel. All right, so the epoxy takes about 24 hours to cure before you can reattach your subframe. So what I suggest is go ahead and remove your rear end. First things first, go ahead and epoxy the plates in and then continue removing all the bushings and changing them out on your subframe. So you're also gonna need some kind of paint undercoating or anything like that. That way any other bare metal that is exposed after you've done epoxying everything, you can go ahead and put some paint on it that way it does not rust in the future. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here are the mounting points. There's four points that we're gonna be putting the reinforcement plates on. These two are the rear and these two are the front. So we are gonna go ahead and clear all the metal up around these plates. You have to be very careful right here is the gas tank. So if you are gonna be using a power tool, make sure you have good control of it and it's not too big. All right, so what you might wanna do is just get your plates and just test fit them first. That way you can see where you need to remove all the paint from. You wanna go a little bit further than where the plates end. That way you have a little overlapping of the epoxy that you can do. All right, so I went ahead and test fitted the plate before I started sanding all the paint and undercoating off. As you can see, the plate right here is overlapping this piece of metal that's sticking out. So we're gonna have to cut the plate just a little bit so it clears that. Same thing on the other side. 
we're gonna go ahead and cut it right here and I'm gonna go ahead and outline the plates the front and the back with the sharpie that way I know but pretty much the general area where I need to sand all the paint off and my kit came with these two bolts right here and it also came with spacers to put on these back mounts but uh, the, a lot of people what they like to do is they like to go ahead and uh, sand all this down and go ahead and epoxy those spacers in as well I personally prefer putting the spacers on the mount itself which you will see when I'm done with the rest of the process Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and take off all the paint. So we want to be really careful since this is the gas tank. If you're going to be using any power tools, make sure that you do not slip and hit it. So what I'm going to do on this side, since the gas tank is a lot closer on the passenger side, I'm just going to get the majority of the area and then I'm going to come back and get closer to the gas tank with sandpaper. Alright, so I still have got these funky goggles on, but I'm going to go ahead and sand the rest of the areas that I couldn't get with the power tool. And you want to be really, really careful, especially if you still have your gas tank in. So just be very careful if you're throwing a lot of sparks. Alright, so I went ahead and sanded everything down. It's pretty much bare metal everywhere we needed to be. I'm going to go ahead and clean all the plates and the surfaces that everything's going to go on. So let me go ahead and clean everything up and then we're going to start heating up the epoxy. Alright, so I went ahead and removed this little red uh, cap thing that was in there to prevent the epoxy from coming out. Put the mixing nozzle in. I'm going to heat up the whole epoxy and the mixing nozzle with the heat gun. You don't really have to use like high heat, just use low heat. Alright, so once you have it heated up, go ahead and let some of the uh, epoxy come through the nozzle and mix up and just let some of it just like go to waste. Alright, it's mixing up. Let's go ahead and start applying it. But make sure you don't get it into the threaded holes. Alright, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a spreader and spread it around a little bit. Alright, let's go ahead and put that plate on. You don't want to put the screw too tight, just tight enough. I'll go ahead and coat the top of the plate if we have enough left over. So these long rods are actually supposed to go in the front section, but I kind of mixed it up. They're just placeholders, so it doesn't matter. So it's going to take about 24 hours for the epoxy to cure. 
So you wanna leave the bolts in there for about 24 hours, but around like the four or five hour mark, go ahead and just twist the bolt just a little bit, just in case if there is any epoxy on that bolt, it will just break the epoxy. Cause after the fifth hour, it's gonna start hardening. So you wanna go ahead and just break that little uh, epoxy, whatever stuck on it. Also what you can do now is go ahead and put epoxy everywhere else on the plate in all the gaps that are gonna be there, all the holes, wherever you can get the epoxy, go ahead and just put it on there. You could probably just use a spreader, that'll be the best way to do it. And then just leave the section where the bolt goes, just make sure you don't get it on there. Besides that, go ahead and cover the whole thing. I'm also gonna be making a video on how to do the structural foam reinforcement as well. And I'll explain what the, par what the purpose and the process of that is as well on another video. So stay tuned for that video and thanks for watching.